Hello friends, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today I come up with some coffee shots of domain 1. Yes, coffee shots mean questions. Uh, I took some topic like risk and um, SOD kind of a topics and based on that I made some questions here. This is the first part of domain 1 which I am covering. If you're new to my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon and subscribe button to make sure you should not miss my future videos. And my name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. Thank you. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Okay, so very good question. After identifying fraud, security professional would seek to implement policies. Fraud mean incident. Policy to reduce the fraud and the possibility of employee collaboration. Collaboration mean collusion. Normally what happen? Uh, we have one person example. So if you take example here as a one person, there is a possibility that uh, he can able to create a bill. He can sign the bill and then he approve the bill. Okay, by which he can commit the fraud. That's why to overcome that we introduce a separation of a duty. Person one, person two, person three. So person one do his set of area that create a bill. Person two will basically sign the bill and person three will basically process the bill. So person one now have a dependency on person two and three to complete the transaction. But at later stage, there is a possibility they can all work together to commit the fraud. And this condition is called as a collaboration and collusion. And in this question, they're talking about that only the possibility of employed collaboration. So which of the following is the most effective control to detect the fraud and prevent the similar fraud in the future? Directly I'm eliminating a separation of a duty because separation duty was introduced to prevent the fraud from the one person. Because now one activity or that entire function was split into three people. But there is a possibility even after splitting that to the three people they can work together to commit the fraud. Least privilege is basically a control by which we can enforce a separation duty. So D and B is removed. Now we left with A which is a job rotation and option C mandatory vacation. If the question talking about detecting the fraud then I will go with the C mandatory vacation. Because mandatory vacation in that case what happened we can send the person to on a vacation. It doesn't mean we will going to sponsor his Goa trip and all that. He will be away from the process and someone else will going to took over the process and try to review but he can join back in the same department so mandatory vacation was introduced to detect the fraud but question was saying that detect and prevent so we can go with the job rotation as the best answer because in this case person two will be moved from other position and someone else will take over the position permanently so that create also deterrence among the existing person that if he do some kind of fraud he will get tracked easily because after one month someone is going to take over the position. So job rotation is act like a deterrence and it is also preventive because after some period of time the person will be moved from one position to other position. Huh? If the question talking about only detecting the fraud then answer is mandatory vacation. So from a CSSP context mandatory vacation was the detection of a fraud. Job rotation was a correction of that fraud. Okay so correction of that activity. To make sure this should not be happen again that is why i am going with the answer job rotation let's move to the next coffee shot thank you recently aspirants technology migrate most of the services and storage in the cloud between we decided to move data in the cloud you are the security consultant of an organization and are aware that many users store business documents on a public cloud storage and understand that this pose a risk to the organization. As a result, so risk is there to store the data. As a result, the security consultant conduct the training session, which is awareness and everything that instruct all the staff on the correct usage of the cloud based storage, which are the following risk treatment approach you have to implement in this situation. See, actually storing the data in the cloud is a concern. See, one small tips for the CSSP exam. If you get a scenario based question, don't get panic. Most of the question, okay, answer you can able to identify in the last line. Okay. And one more important thing, when you read a paragraph based question, so two, three scenario based question, it is a good thing because you're getting more and more data there. So there is no point of becoming a blank. Okay. Relax, close your eyes for a second and then read the question again and try to draw the scenario. So in this case, they're talking about there is a client 
who want to upload data in the cloud. So now security consultant understood this concern with the data messaging and data apping in happening in the cloud. So he want to ensure data should be protected according to the best practices. And he want to correct the situation. So option A is risk avoidance is there, but in this case we conducting a training. Risk avoidance is a kind of a treatment where we avoiding a source which bring risk to the organization. Ha, huh, if the question talking about this continuing the cloud services then it makes sense the answer is A. But the question saying that they have conducted a training to the staff how to handle data security in the cloud. So A removed. Risk transfer. See you transferring the impact to third party, but you still user is using a cloud to upload the data. So this is an action that I have taken to conduct the training. So B is removed. They have not accepted the risk here because they understood the risk of storing data in the cloud. They're looking for the solution and the solution what training. So only thing is basically left is mitigation. That's why the answer is basically C, C for Charlie. So in this case, they have mitigate. They have mitigate this issue by providing a security awareness training, how to use data in a cloud environment. So let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Aspirants must do an annual penetration test due to the compliance, regulations, security checks and business norm. They want to conduct the annual PT as per the PCI DSS and everything. You are working as an information security consultant and have requested to conduct the black box testing. See, we have a two type of testing, black box and white box. Black box where we don't share any information with the tester. They start from a basic and gather the information. And our intent to perform the black box testing is that, you know, we just want to know how secure is my organization. Find all the information from the internet, try to use and try to exploit. So we have to think like a hacker. But in the white box, we share complete information about the system. But here the question is talking about conducting a black box. So it is more about external to internal testing. Which of the following would get the most benefit from running the black box testing? So most is a keyword mean most regular. So option A, the finding will provide in-depth view of the network and should assist in identifying vulnerabilities of the internal network. But why be specifically to the internal network? Option B, outcome should reflect what attackers may be capable of discovering about the business associate risk and vulnerability, whether internal network or external network attack vectors. Makes sense. Option C, pen test organization may immediately identify area to focus on using the document supplied, but that is something after the PT. No benefit, which is not true. So A and B look very close. I'm eliminating A because it is not only about internal network. We will also focus on the external and internal both. That is why the answer is B in that case. So I'm going with the B as a best answer. Let's move to the next part. According to an enterprise security policy, all system must use password at least eight character long. It means as per the password policy, eight character must be used. This policy does not apply to a two systems on the network. One system will be upgraded in four months while other will not be upgraded or withdrawn from the network. It means one system will be upgraded in a four months while other will not be upgraded. So condition is policy does not apply to two system. Okay, so there is some risk acceptance is there. And one system will upgrade in four months while other system will be upgraded or withdrawn from the network. Which of the following procedure should be carried out? So we need to provide the business reason for risk mitigation, but here risk is not mitigating because here they're saying that policy does not apply to two systems. So it is not a mitigation. So A removed. We haven't transfer here also because we just withdraw. So we are left with B and C. B saying that provide the business justification for avoiding a risk. We are not avoiding, we have accepting the risk here, right? The two systems on the network. So that is removed. So only option is basically left is C. So we are providing a business justification for the risk acceptance. And according to that, we can basically go with the system. See, if you go by the CISSP logic, whenever things are going against the compliance, in this case, two systems are going against the compliance. So we have to assess the risk of non-compliance, amend in the business case and provide the exception report for that. Always remember. That's why in this case, answer is basically C, C for Charlie. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Risk manager is reading a report that highlights the need to maintain the functioning of mission critical legacy system. Definitely mission critical legacy system has a dependency on the business. For the next three year, the vendor no longer support the old system. 
it means the legacy system is not been supported by the vendor now it is more like a end of life cycle and vendor supplied security fixes are no longer available you will be surprised to know that this is like a soft target for the hackers okay additionally this is an embedded system about which little is known or published so we don't have any further action plan how to protect so which of the following should the information security consultant recommend best in order to mitigate the security risk associated with the system compromise see tomorrow if this kind of a system is compromised i want to reduce the impact because there is no support from the vendor so what is the action plan we take migrate to the cloud but it is a it is a legacy system we don't sure about if it's migrate on the cloud how it works so a removed installation of a antivirus and hids it is more like a detective control implement vlan makes sense by which we can isolate the system from other network but with the air gap network with the physical segmentation and logical segmentation from other network will make the things more secure because logical still able to compromise but physical is basically more secure that is why i am going with the answer b so this is all from my side if you find this this video useful do let me know can we publish similar videos in the future do let me know your feedback in the comment section and if you new to my channel do subscribe to my youtube channel because this year i'm coming up with more scenario based questions whether for cssp csi and csm thank you for watching my video goodbye